Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are so happy that we can bring you finally a new video on the Botch But Works channel. Today, we're looking at a project that you have seen before, probably the Pinsel box that we already made a presentational video about. And it's this neat gadget that I store all of my soldering accessories inside. I finished the plans so that you can make your very own soldering accessories box. We're going to go over all the individual steps, which cutters to use, what to do in which order. But don't worry, I have an extensive plan that I'll be hosting on ShaperHub and I'll also put a link in the description where you can read all of these steps and it's basically like milling by numbers in I think 42 simple steps and all the cutter changes and depth settings are encoded into the file or noted in that help document so that you can get going with your very own. Before we dive right in, small disclaimer, my opinion on all of these Shaper products is no longer unbiased because I have recently become part of the EU Shaper team. That also means that in this video and the following ones, I'll be able to give you some tips and tricks that you might not have known about because yeah, my day job now is working with Shaper Origin and exploring all of the exciting features of the machine and the accessories. By the way, if you can't wait to learn more about your Christmas gift or maybe soon to be Christmas gift, we have a couple more videos concerning the Shaper Origin on our YouTube channel, for example, about how not to break any of your cutters, workpiece fixturing and the such, and also a two-part Inkscape tutorial for those of you who would like to learn a open source uh, vector graphics drawing software. All right, let's take a quick look at the pencil box that we're going to be making today and prepare the individual manufacturing steps. So this is it, the pencil box. <laughs> Basically, it holds an entire small soldering set. So at the heart of it is my Pinesel soldering iron. It's an amazing piece of equipment. I recommend you check it out if you find yourself soldering on the go a lot. Uh, it's made by a community called Pine64. And then I have a pair of pliers, have some solder, I have replacement tips, a couple of tools. Then there's a small um, brass coil that holds the soldering iron when it's warm. Over here I can brush the tip off when it's hot. And below I have a small jar of, I'm not sure what it's called in English, but in German it's Lötspitzenaktivator to like refurbish the tip when it's gone bad. And then on the other side, of course, the trusty Knipex um, pair of pliers. And yeah, some excess wiring, a spool of solder as well. And uh, yeah, the box is also able to function as a third and fourth hand by just screwing these alligator clips into here. And then I can have two of those and hold, for example, a piece of wire and a PCB. And the neat thing is that the nuts, these nuts down here, they also function as a closing mechanism because when I close this box, don't forget the lid. Otherwise you'll find yourself <laughs> putting all of the parts back in for five minutes. These nuts here drop right onto these magnets and keep the box nice and closed. This is the manufacturing step-by-step -step list. Don't worry if you can't read everything right now, you can check out the description of this video to get access to this file. I spent quite some time thinking about in what order to best manufacture all of these very small and intricate pockets and keep the number of cutter changes in the spindle as low as possible. By the way, it is totally possible to make this entire box with the cutters provided with your Shaper Origin. So the three millimeter, six millimeter end mill and the 60 degree engraving bit. I am going to be using a couple of special cutters that you can get on the website as well today, but they're not necessary. They're just for some nice effects, for example, rounded edges or to be a bit faster 
with larger diameter bits inside these pockets, but you don't necessarily need those. The first thing I'm gonna do is mill two very small holes for the brass soldering iron holder with a 1.4 millimeter bit. Then I'm gonna switch to a large bit. I'd recommend the 60 millimeter clearing cutter and uh, take out most of the material of these pockets just so we have a small speed up for later on. After that, I'm going to be using a rounded or ball nose cutter for some rounded edge effects. And afterwards use a three millimeter bit for a couple more small holes, such as the holes for the magnets and nuts and also the four Lego pins, if you noticed. I designed those to hold the lid on the left side of the box. And the last cutter change will be to a six millimeter bit to finish all of the pockets and cut both of these boxes out. As soon as the wooden box halves are done, I'm going to grab a two millimeter piece of acrylic glass or plastic, make a couple of small holes and these engravings, which are gonna give us a neat design for our lid section over here. I've encoded all of the depths into the design files, so you don't have to read them all off of the manufacturing step-by-step -step plan, but can just hover over a design and check the encoded depth and if we set this up correctly, we'll get the green check mark and are ready to go. Pockets are prepared now and we'll go over those again later on with our six millimeter end mill. And now I've switched to the ball nose cutter and with that I want to make these rounded edges in here. already arrived at the last cutter switch for the wooden boxes and I'm using a six millimeter end mill by Sorotech. Drop me a comment if you'd like a link to this specific cutter. I'm going to rely heavily on the auto pass feature for these next few cuts because we're doing all of the contours of the pockets now and it'll save us a ton of plunging and retracting. And we have the added benefit that the last pass of our contours is always going to be a finishing pass. So auto pass will automatically omit the offset that I entered so that our end mill can just dig into just a couple of tenths of millimeters on the last pass and we get a awesome and smooth edge on all of our shapes. Let's get right to it and finish these boxes.
The two wooden boxes turned out fantastic so far. And the next thing is to cut the plastic lids. So I have fastened these two millimeter acrylic sheets to the table and will now start with the engravings. And the only notable part about these lids are the four holes that the Lego pins are going to grab onto. And uh, those are two concentric circles and you're gonna have to zoom in pretty far on your origin because they're really close to each other. But it's this small uh, gap that will enable the clicky functionality of those lids. Let's get going. parts for both boxes and both lids are now finished. If I'd only done one of each then I'd say I would have taken about two hours. I'm gonna show you the next steps now so for example how I'd press in the hinges and magnets but I'm not actually going to do it because I want to sand both boxes and apply some oil first and that's not gonna be part of this video but if you would like to see some photos of the finished pencil boxes you can check out my Instagram page. Okay so after sanding and oiling the parts we need to press in the nuts, the hinges and the magnets. Put two nuts on one side and then just press it in like so. And if for some reason any of these press in parts um, come loose, then you could also apply some drops of CA glue and secure them like that. So this is where the nuts go. Moving on to the magnets. And by the way, I'll be putting the exact dimensions of everything, including a parts and order list on Shaper Hub. These magnets just go into the slots right there. And the star of the hinging motion are these 180 degree hinge mechanisms. And those of course go into these small slots. Yeah, and most of the other things is basically optional, but I designed it to hold a pencil soldering iron replacement tips, an SMD tweezer, two of these flexible arms without the nuts, and my trusty Knipex, then a 3D printed solder spool, but I guess you could also make one out of wood, and there's two crocodile clamps, and some mesh to clean the uh, solder tip off. The Lötspitzen activator goes right here. And last but not least, four standard Lego Technics pins. And those will snap into our lid over here. Why didn't I do this with magnets and stuff? Because this lid is super slim and magnets and screws or some other mechanism uh, would have been too thick and this works really well for this thin sheet of material. And I made the holder for the pencil out of a brass tube, but you can use whatever you like, whatever you're able to bend into this shape. And I'm not sure what the exact diameter of this is, but just try to hit the two holes down there. And of course you can also just um, enlarge these two holes with a drill bit to match the diameter of your tubing. Keep in mind, even though I tried to design this to be as compact as possible, there's still space here and there for leftover wires, shrink tubing, or some extra long pliers that I just put between these flexible arms. That wraps up today's Pencil Box build video. I hope you're inspired to build your own and I'd love to see some pictures of your variant. I'm amazed by how often I'm able to repair or build something on the fly because I now always have my portable soldering iron with me. You can find all of the plans and guides and parts lists in the link in the description, which will lead you to Shaper Hub. And I'll try to upload as many photos and textual descriptions of the build process as I can. If you still have any open questions, then please put them in the comments and I'll try to respond and get you up and running to build your very own portable solder accessory box. 
Thanks so much for taking a look at this project and we hope to see you again in one of our next videos. See you then. Through the city of light